story tonight will take your breath away, literally. India is officially the world's pollution capital and its most famous monument is testimony to this. The Taj Mahal, a symbol of eternal love, one of the eight wonders of the world, is losing its sheen. The 17th century mausoleum, famous for its white marble facade, has turned a sickly colour. This monument is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It is turning pale now. Growing concerns over the changing colour have led the Supreme Court, the top court of this country, to ask the federal government to hire experts to restore the pristine glory of the Taj. The court said that the famous tomb, built from white marble and other materials, had previously turned yellow and was now turning brown and green. Pollution, construction, insect waste are said to be among the causes. The dirt is not a new problem, though. Several times over the past two decades, the Taj Mahal's exterior has been coated in a mud pack in an, in an attempt to clean it. Its most recent mud bath began in January this year. Scaling the walls on scaffolds, workers plastered the surface with fuller's earth, which is a mud paste that absorbs dirt, grease and animal excrement. The mud is then washed off, taking the dirt with it. The current cleanup operation is expected to last until late this year. But there are fears that the problem is worsening and the restoration measures are not enough. This is also not the first time that the Taj's plight has reached the country's top court. In 1984, advocate MC Mehta filed a petition drawing the court's attention to the deteriorating condition of the Taj Mahal. He said that excessive water and air pollution, clogged drains and industries around the site had led to the deterioration. Also, a river flowing nearby is ex exceedingly contaminated and all of this collectively was doing serious harm to the Taj. And why just the Taj? The people of this country are also dying thanks to pollution. It is being called the airpocalypse. One of the biggest studies on the air we breathe has thrown up some disturbing facts. Let's first tell you about this study. It was conducted by the World Health Organization, the WHO. It involves satellite imaging. It involved data from 4,300 cities across 108 countries. And this is what they found. We have, in our estimates, of 7 million deaths caused by exposure to air pollution. We know that 4.2 million are due to exposure to outdoor air pollution, what we call ambient air pollution. So it's related to what we do at the urban level. While 3.8 million deaths are associated to the fact that many people around the world is still relying on very polluting fuels for cooking or heating or lighting in their houses at the household level. Let's break it down for you. The report claims that 21% of fatal pneumonia cases, 20% of fatal strokes, 7% of lung cancers across the world are caused because of pollutants in the air. It is lethal and now there is mounting proof. The unit measured is particulate matter, meaning very small particles of pollutants, sulfates, nitrates, black carbon, floating around in the air. You and I inhale this air, it's polluted, it kills. Every year, bad air, in fact, is killing a staggering 7 million people. So where do these pollutants come from? They're largely created by car and truck tra traffic, manufacturing and power plants. But if you thought that air pollution was a predominantly urban phenomenon, this report has some eye-openers. A whopping 3.8 million deaths in the year 2016 happened due to household air pollution, which basically means pollution created by sources other than vehicles. Almost half of the world's population is breathing deadly fumes from domestic cooking stoves and fires. People in poorer countries still rely on unclean fuel like kerosene and coal instead of cleaner alternatives like gas and electricity. Air pollution levels were the highest in the eastern Mediterranean and southeast Asian regions. Airborne toxins were five times the acceptable limit in these parts. Most of India falls in this category. This report is particularly worrying for India. In fact, this country has 14, 14, 14 of the 20 most polluted cities in the world. Why does India fare so poorly? Are the pollution levels here worsening by the year? Why have we failed to combat pollution? Is a sincere effort even being made? For all the money you pay in taxes, why can the system not give you a very basic amenity, clean air to breathe? This is a common sight in India, especially in the country's national capital in New Delhi. Locals and tourists alike are often spotted wearing masks or riding a bike with a scarf across their face. And who can blame them? 
New Delhi is one of the most polluted cities not only in the country but across the world. As India witnesses more industrial growth, availability of fresh air is depleting with each passing day. Living conditions in urban areas are worsening and clean air can be found only in rural areas. But why is India struggling to curb the menace? For one, the use of cow dung as fuel. With almost 70% of the population living in rural areas, cow dung and dry wood is still used by many as fuel, which is a major factor that leads to air pollution. Another reason for Delhi's high pollution levels is the burning of crop residue in neighboring states of Haryana, Punjab and Uttar Pradesh. It is estimated that 35 million tons of crop is set on fire in these three states alone. The air quality further declines because of strong and dusty dry summer winds which carry pollutants from nearby industrial areas to the residential areas. Pollution caused by the traffic menace is another reason contributing to air pollution and smog. It was found that in major and highly dense cities, vehicular exhaust accounts for 70% of all carbon dioxide emission. India is the world's second largest coal burner after China, generating 210 gigawatts of electricity a year, mostly from coal. Fossil fuel emissions contain major greenhouse gases, including carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide and fluorinated gases, adding to the country's pollution woes. But the biggest contributor of them all is the industrial chimney waste. As India rapidly moved towards industrialization, it also brought upon itself the perils of progress, including pollution. Factories release plenty of dust, acid vapors and major pollutants which make living in these areas near the factories almost suicidal. The world is getting cleaner, but India is getting filthier. Air pollution levels have risen by as much as 13% in five years between 2010 and 2015. And what's worse is that monitoring mechanisms in the country are abysmally low. Toxic levels of air pollution is a reality in many major cities in India. And even though the central and state governments are doing their bit to fight the issue, there is very little change on ground. Bureau Report, Beyond. The problem may be amplified in India, but it is not unique to this country. Pollution is a global challenge. It's worth looking at the best performers to see what lessons can be learned and implemented. So we on Gravitas compiled a list of the world's cleanest cities. Look at them and ask yourself and your government why your city cannot be like these. We're starting with the city of Calgary in Canada. It has a population of more than one million, despite being in a, in a booming oil and gas region, Calgary is among the cleanest in the world. What has it done? It has strategically planned and implemented steps to reduce traffic congestion. The city has, uh, has been set up like a grid structure. It has set up a grid structure. It uses an effective rail scheme to reduce congestion and emissions. Calgary has also pioneered garbage transfer stations. They sort through the waste they remove all biodegradable and recyclable materials. This reduces the need for landfills. Next on our list is Honolulu in Hawaii in the United States. The city has a light manufacturing industry. It attracts lakhs of tourists every year, which should mean more vehicular traffic and pollution, but they've found a way around it. They promote public transport, dedicated bus lanes, an effective transit system, reducing exhaust fumes and keeping pollution in check. We'll try to bring up those images as well for you. The third is Helsinki, one of the many Nordic cities to make it to this list of the cleanest in the world. The residents of this city are very committed to preserving the environment and preventing littering. Wider streets make them less prone to congestion. And the light rail commuter system is most widely used to reduce emissions. Next comes Oslo. One of the reasons why it consistently makes it to the clean list is its creative planning. Look at these pictures. Oslo's developers found unusual ways to go green. Many buses in the city are fueled by human waste. The aim is to increase the scale and reach a point where the entire fleet runs on clean fuel. Now to Brisbane in Australia. It has a population of 2.3 million, but it's spotlessly clean. There is also an abundance of recreational spaces, parks, botanical gardens, which basically means more green cover, cleaner air. Even though it is home to several industries, all of them are environmental. 
capital of Sweden, Stockholm, was awarded the title of the cleanest capital in Europe by the European Union in 2010. What works in its favor is that there are very few heavy industries, in other words, negligible industrial emissions. The city also has the largest percentage of clean vehicles in Europe. In Asia, the Japanese city of Kobe features on this list. The town is highly populated. It is a major tourist attraction. The city is famous for its advanced sewage management installations and vehicles that are eco-friendly. Kobe has Japan's most effective waste disposal systems. It recycles most of the waste it generates. For changes to take effect, the first step is acknowledgement of the problem. The second is the sincere effort towards its resolution. Is India doing it? Does the government even believe that it needs to fix this urgently? Let's look at the record of the government of India. In, its, uh, in this year's budget, the Indian government allocated more than 2,000 crore Indian rupees to the Environment Ministry. A special scheme to address rising air pollution in Delhi and nearby states was also announced. The economic survey, which is released just before the budget, names India's capital city, New Delhi, as one of the most unhealthy, one of the worst cities to live in. Last year, the budget of this very ministry was hiked by 19%. So while there, there is allocation of money, more and more money is being pumped into this ministry to fight climate change, are they spending it in the right direction? The results do not say so. In 2017, a study found that India spends eight times of the fuel subsidy given out to citizens, meaning first we spend on making fuel accessible, people get more petrol, people get more diesel, then we spend eight times that money to deal with the fallout of burning these. According to the United Nations, India loses billions to air pollution. Instead of creating systems to clean the air, we end up losing human resource. The United Nations says that India lost more than $200 billion to mortality due to air pollution. India had the highest share of welfare costs in South and Southeast Asia. India is among the largest recipients of climate change assistance from around the world. In November 2017, one report claimed that India gets more than a billion dollars to combat climate change. Part of this money needs to be used to reduce the levels of pollution in India's cities. But the numbers from around the world are not too encouraging either. Last year, a report in the Washington Times claimed that global emissions are up by 2% two years after the Paris Accord kicked in. Researchers fear that the climate deal may be failing to live up to its expectations. The report claimed that emission levels in the United States continue to drop even after President Donald Trump decided to pull out of the Paris deal. But China, amongst others, has failed to keep its carbon emissions under control. All in all, the picture looks sooty the world over. The silver lining coming from India, according to the WHO report, the Ujwala scheme of the Prime Minister is helping change the kind of fuel that rural households use, 38 million women getting access to cleaner fuel, so efforts still being made.